Earlier this month, President Uhuru Mugai Kenyatta embarked on a charm offensive tour of central Kenya and the larger Mount Kenya region. And the president's mission was very clear. Number one, President Uhuru Kenyatta wanted to fight the notion that he had done very little to the people of central Kenya and Mount Kenya region as far as development projects are concerned. He wanted to fight that notion because there was that belief that he had done very little, but the deputy president had done more. Number two, President Urum Kenyatta also wanted to take control and charge of central Kenya and the larger Mount Kenya politics. Because that politics had gone to the side, had gone in favor of his deputy William Samoy Ruto. And number three, the president also wanted to start the campaigning his deputy in central Kenya and the larger Mount Kenya region. Because for the first time, President Uru Mugai Kenyatta announced right in central Kenya that he doesn't have a preferred candidate. Remember, in the, before the last, before the handshake, President Uru Mugai Kenyatta had maintained and told his people that he was going to serve two terms and that his deputy was going to serve another two terms. Basically, they were going to serve for 20 years. But now he was telling them that he doesn't have a preferred candidate. Basically, he was decampaigning his deputy. And from uh, after that, the former president, Daniel Toretisha Rapmoy, passed on. And before the passing on of the former president, the politics of this country had actually picked and the passing on of the former president slowed down the politics a bit. And today, the deputy president, William Samoy Ruto, was again in central Kenya for the first time after the president's charm offensive. He was in Kirugoya, Kirugoya in Kirinyaga County for a church service. And I really wanted to understand and know and feel whether the president's charm offensive in central Kenya had impacted on William Samoy Ruto's politics. Let me just, I, I like being, um, being very honest with this. The president was basically at uh, the ACK, new ACK St. Thomas Church in Kerugoya, presided over by Archbishop Jackson Olesapit. And the deputy president was the guest of honor. And when I learned that the deputy president was going to be in Kerenyaga, I really wanted to see the kind of people who are going to accompany him. Because remember, when the president, when the president was in central Kenya, he was in Nyandarwa, he was in Kerenyaga, the president was in Meru, and also he was in Nakuru. And during the tour of the president, the allies of the deputy president were kicked out of the president's function. So I wanted to see whether that president's jump offensive in central Kenya is actually working. Because remember, when the president was in Kirinyaga, for example, where the deputy president was today, he was accompanied by the governor, Anway Guru. He was accompanied by the minister for agriculture, Peter Munya. He was accompanied by Karanja Kibicho. You know who Karanja Kibicho and William Ruto is. And the president was also accompanied by Purity Girichi. Purity Girichi is one of the diehard supporters of the deputy president from central Kenya. And when the, when the DP arrived in Kirinyaga today, they shared the list of the people and the members of parliament who accompanied him. Let me just read for you the list which they shared, which they, 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 their team actually shared online. There was the deputy president, then there was Honorable Purity Wangui Girichi, who was the host as the women rep. There was uh, Honorable Munene Wambugu, I don't know which member of parliament. Then there was Honorable Gichimu, not very known to me. Then there was Jane Kehara. 
Jim Kihara is from Naivasha. She was present. Now that's Rift Valley. I'm keen on members of parliament from Central. Then there was Faith Wairimu Gitau. Who is that? Then there was Giradi Dashagwa. That's the member for parliament for Madeira. A diehard supporter of the duty president. Then there was Ndinti Nyoro, the Kiharu member of parliament, another diehard of the deputy president. Then there was Honorable Rindikire. I don't know who that is. I want to be honest. Then there was James Gakoya. I want to assume that's the member of parliament for Embakasi. Was it? Is it not? The guy was arrested the other day. Then there was Beatrice Cornes. That's the Kericho women rep. Then there was Janet CTNA. That's, I think, uh, another women rep. Either from... Uh, yeah, that's another women rep. Then there was Lisa Chelule. The women rep for Nakuru, Rift Valley. Then there was Lucy Njeri, Moniki. That's uh, an MCA. Then there was... Then there was... Um, Another MC, I think, Rose Warbeni. I don't know where, why they shared this list of the people who attended that event. Because from that list, you can clearly see that allies, uh, that members of parliament from central Kenya have started shunning events presided over by the deputy president. That's something which is coming out clearly. Because where was where was Alice Wahome? People have been asking where is Alice Wahome? Where was she? Where was Alice Wahome? Can't tell. Moses Kuria, where is Moses Kuria? Where was Moses Kuria to accompany the deputy president? I'm keen on two, those two people. Because someone like Kimani Shungwa probably comes from Kikuyu and might not have attended. Just like, you know, not, not all of them must attend. But where are the rest of members of parliament who normally accompany the deputy president to such events? Or is there a chance that the deputy president wanted to make this event a low-key event? Now let's get into the real politics. Assuming the, 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 the former president, Daniel Toretita Rapmoy, didn't pass on, what would have been the scenario today? The scenario today would have been that yesterday we would have had the Building Bridges Initiative event happening in this country in two places. There was one which was scheduled to happen in Afra Stadium. And there was also another one which was scheduled to happen in water. So we are going to have two BBI events on Saturday. And because we are in politics, this event by the deputy president was designed in such a way that it was going to fall a day after that particular building bridges initiative events. In Akuru and in water. And in water, for those who might not know, that event was not going to be presided over by Raila Odinga. And many leaders allied to Tim Kileweke were going to boycott that event. Because according to them, Ukambani had a Building Bridges Initiative event in Kitui. And Raila made it very clear that from Kitui, they were going to go to Meru. That was the, 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 the coming weekend, not this one. But because of Ukambani politics, between Ngilu, Kalonzo, Kibwana, Mutua. They decided to put it, it uh, yesterday. Which didn't happen because of the moist passing on. So the, the situation would have been today that the DP was going to address this church service after those two events. That's what was going to happen. But because of the unfortunate incident of the former president. The Kirinyaga event had to happen because it had been planned 
long ago. And again, if you look at the nature of the event, it's a church service. William Ruto worked very closely with the former president. I mean, with the president Uhuru Mwege Kenyatta. They worked very closely in 2013 and they worked very, they worked very closely in 2017. And what worked for them was this image which Cambridge Analytica managed to instill in the heads of their supporters that these guys were God-fearing. That Uhuru, for example, was anointed by God. And you know religion, what religion does to people? It gives people hope. And because the DP worked and he saw how that worked for them, he's associating himself with the church so that he can win the souls, especially of the poor, as someone who is God-fearing. And that's why he chose this event. But the fact that majority of leaders from, from uh, central Kenya didn't attend that event and actually boycotted. Because this church event, is a, it, it, it was basically a big event. If you see the structure, that's one of the biggest churches as far as structures are concerned in this country. Ideally, the governor for Kirinyaga, Anuaiguru, ought to have been present at this event. Because it was church event, assuming. But, but why Anuaiguru did not attend that event? I don't know why, but I, I want to believe it's because the card which was distributed had the name of the deputy president, William Ruto, as the chief guest. But what about other key leaders from Central Kenya? Why did they boycott this event? I can only conclude that they boycotted because of the presence of the duty president, William Samuel Ruto. Or alternatively, I want to say that maybe the deputy president has changed strategy. He doesn't want to be seen to be in competition, especially with the president. Because when the president was in central Kenya, he, he locked out members of parliament from attending that event, his event. And because in politics, you don't outshine your master, probably the DP didn't want to come, to come along with his Tangatanga brigades to Kirinyaga. Because coming with a, that huge, 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 huge number of members of parliament to Kirinyaga, would have meant that he wanted to pass a message to the president because the president was just there the other day. So probably his advisors advised him not to tag along several members of parliament allied to him, especially those from central Kenya and maybe those outside central Kenya. But in my conclusion, I want to believe based on what I've observed in this church service today, is that either the deputy president has started losing several members of parliament and leaders from central Kenya because of President Uru Mugai Kenyatta's charm offensive or that President Uru Mugai Kenyatta's charm offensive in that region is actually working for President Uru Mugai Kenyatta. I don't know what you think, but from where I am, that's my take. And if you're bumping on this video for the first time, I want you to just take a second or two and hit the subscribe button here so that next time we produce a video like this, you'll always be notified. And to the subscribers, I want to continue thanking you guys for your continued support. Because without your support, this channel would not be where it is. And I want to thank you especially those, I know several of you are always watching supporting this channel in several ways, including watching some of those ads you see there. Some of them are annoying, but some of you guys have told me that they ensure they keep watching them because in most cases, that's how this channel is sustained. Thank you guys, and may you have a good day. And by the way, Nikona Uji, ile plastic unona pale, the green one, 
that's my uji it's waiting for me it's a uh, it's exactly 1 12 by the time of making this video so i want to take uji i'm not going to take lunch so uji traditionally to lugos those are escorts they are appetizers but i want to take it niko na nyoyo mahali hapo nyuma so i want to take it then i'm ready for today because today is a sunday give me thumbs up give me thumbs down and comments on the video thank you guys and may you have a good day